G'day fellas and welcome back to another casted game spawning in on the south of the map. We have the one, the only, the sniper. Spawning in as the Chinese. I know we're not quite doing Viper Watch. We're doing Sniper Watch uh, in this game. So look, I don't know exactly how it's going to work out, but uh, I'm confident that Sniper can bring us some uh, some talent, some interesting strategies. He's going to be going up against his opponent who spawns on the north side of the map, Lee Nock, and he's going to be playing the French. So Lee Nock has typically been our Chinese player. It's been absolutely awesome watching him play. Uh, and, you know, as I say every single time that I spectate Lee Nock, uh, I used to watch this guy back in 2010 when he played StarCraft 2. Uh, I used to watch him on the uh, the GOM StarCraft League GSL back in the day when he was 15 years old and he was taking it to the the, uh, the pros. But uh, now I uh, I get to watch him playing Age of Empires 4. And I tell you what, it is a thing of beauty because I never would have thought back then in 2010 that I'd be able to watch him in my own domain, in the comfort of my own uh, of my own studio apartment. Oh, well, actually, it's not an apartment, but still. Uh, it's, it's a studio. But... Uh, Sniper going to be opening up as the French, going to be opening with that Imperial official um, and uh, going to be looking to drop down a house nice and close to his front berries here. We'll have to see exactly how he plays. It looks like he's going to be opening up with eight on food and then going to be moving over to wood. No double scouts out for him. Um, we'll have a look over towards Lee Nock. So Lee Nock looking like he's not going to be opening double scout either. So just going to be going for a single scout on this map. Going to be heading towards three villagers on gold. That indicates to me that He's going to be wanting to age up. <laughs> like, I was thinking about it. I'm like, does this indicate professional scouts? Not really, because professional scouts is like four on gold. Um, and typically, it's a late four on gold. So it could just be... But then it's like, it could just be um, that he is just, you know, go going for three on gold. I mean, you could probably just go three on gold very comfortably and still get professional scouts. And I think that's going to be the aim of the game or the name of the game um, is, is uh, professional scouts. Now, I, I played this matchup. Uh, this was the matchup that I played against Kapoach. Um, and uh, obviously... It didn't go too well for me. I tried a little bit of a tower rush. So I don't think Sniper, aka the Sniper, is going to be trying that here. We'll see exactly how he manages to do. He's got plenty of attacks sitting in this mill. So sitting up to 30 attacks at the moment. A uh, little bit of a, not a mistake, a, a little bit of a, a standard bug there with the IO. But uh, going to be finding the triple double over towards the east of the map. So a nice little find for him. He's going to be happy with that one. We hear that wolf uh, screaming off in the distance. But uh, now down towards the south of the map, Lee not going to be scouting out his opponent. Age up going to be coming through. Uh, I assume it's going to be four villagers. Yes, four villagers dropping down a school of cavalry. This is looking very familiar. It's actually only going to be three, so he's not looking to rush this one up. It's going to take its time. Probably about a four minute 20 age up, but uh, now does have four villagers on gold. So that to me indicates it is indeed going to be professional scouts. Um, so we'll have to see exactly what type of strategy Lenox is going to be going for, but I suspect it's going to be professional scouts, uh, maybe opening with a single knight, looking to raid his opponent, and then going up into a castle age play. He could look to play age two as well, but you got you got to be careful against China age two. Obviously, the Chokunu, a very strong unit, uh, and uh, something to be very careful of. Even those knights are, are quite uh, quite fragile against the Chokunu. But now we've got uh, only the single IO going to be coming out for Sniper at this stage. He's, he's actually pretty doing pretty decently when it comes to his gold count. That's primarily because he's got three villages on gold or two villages on gold. We're going to be adding a third one. Let's have a look and see what landmark he goes for, whether he goes for a Barbican at the front, whether he goes for a... Um, how's he going to do it? He's going to go Barbican, but he's going to put it down right outside the town center. I don't know how much I agree with this. I mean, I feel like here's probably a better a better spot. I mean, you're going up against French. It's highly likely that they are going to hit you with a... a, um, a uh, uh, whatchamacallit, a, a, uh, gosh, Drongo, where, where is it? I, I keep thinking B, a battering ram. Thank you. Okay, we managed to get it. Battering ram. But uh, now, I Imperial Official on the gold mine, four villagers on the gold as well. Kind of says to me professional scouts from him as well. Uh, we, we could potentially see a dynasty coming out from him though. So we'll have to check in with the sniper, see exactly what he gets up to. No mill coming down just yet for Lee Nock. He's got to add that one in if he does want to go for the professional scouts. He may have forgotten to add it because he's got a lot of gold in the bank at this point in time. And uh, he needs to be dropping down that mill very soon. I think he might have forgotten. I mean, he, he could just not be going for it, but I mean, four villagers on gold and this much in the bank. You'd be, you'd be, a, you'd be a madman not to. Scout, uh, actually, he might not. He's only on single scout. Um, he didn't add the second scout uh, during the early stages of the game. So Sniper now clicking up before him. We've got the 4.30 time on that. Uh, looking to add a stone mine in. So what has he spotted from his enemy that he thought that that would be appropriate? Actually just going to be going straight into Royal Knights. So adding no mill down and looking to go for a second town center here. So Lee Nock looking to play a little bit more economic. Try and keep up with the, the Chinese 
economy. It's always a little bit, uh, a little bit faster, a little bit harder. But uh, now we've got uh, barracks going to be coming down for the sniper. So that is, a, that's not necessarily a blind barracks. Obviously, when you're playing up against the French, you know that they're going to be making a school of cavalry. It's no real surprise uh, when you do see a knight out. You're like, oh, well, he is playing the French, so. I kind of did expect it, right? But uh, Sniper's still looking pretty decent at this point in time. He's going to be able to shadow back this Royal Knight. He's going to know exactly where it's coming in from the angle. He's not going to be able to lose, or he, he won't lose any villagers here, or at least he shouldn't lose any villagers here. But uh, now that scout going to be caught up in the middle, and uh, th that's exactly what uh, Sniper wants. He wants the uh, Royal Knight to attack the scout because then that's just going to delay his attack. And ideally, what you'd be doing with the scout is running away towards the base of Lee Nock and just delaying the attack. First spear going to be coming out for him. Uh, got double Imperial official out here and uh, Sniper going to be scouting out. You see the uh, the wolf actually getting in on the action here. Looking to do a bit of damage towards that knight. We'll have, have to chase that, but uh, we'll spot exactly what Lee Nock is up to now. Looking to add in that second town center, you can see that he's working towards it. But uh, I, I'm curious as to whether his opponent has actually scouted that out. The scout has been on that side of the map, but I don't know whether the stone has been spotted out from him. I, I wish we could, I wish we could see that. Uh, looks like he's going to be going for a dynasty though. Uh, stable getting added down. He really wants to head towards this dynasty. I suspect um, he, he's been sort of like heading towards it for a while. Uh, what technologies have we got coming in from the mill at this stage? Professional scouts is coming in. Village is going to get forced off the gold mine. Got to be careful here. Spears coming in as well. First villager probably of the game going to be going down right here. The second charge going to be making it. And so that villager does go down. Scout failing a little bit there. Not giving the intel required. Uh, so ideally for Sniper, I'd love to see an outpost come out here just to secure up those villagers. That's one of the things that you've... You sort of have adapted to with the uh, with playing against this civilization is that you kind of just need outposts everywhere against the French. You kind of needed outposts against the Rus as well, but obviously their play style has changed significantly. Scout doing a pretty good job of spotting out these villagers. Obviously, he knows that there's going to be villagers on that, but uh, sitting underneath the Barbican, they're going to be safe. Second Town Center going to be coming up over on the berries. So not looking to actually put that on the, um, on the deer or on the hunt. So there's a nice little patch of hunt out here. Obviously, it's a little bit further away, but he does have the agency. So remember when it comes to the strengths of civilizations, it's all about agency, in my opinion, in the early game. Uh, China doesn't have a lot of agency, doesn't have a lot of control, a lot of aggression, uh, whereas the French do. So with that being said, you could very easily put that town center down on that hunt and be you know, be in an absolutely fine position. So very safe decision here from Lenoch to go for this. But now down towards the south, we he will spot out that uh, Professional Scouts is out for his opponent. He's going to be looking to potentially come in and and, and uh, encounter that. Villager going to be careful. Another villager going to be going down. That's the second of the game. So a little bit of a mistake once again from Sniper. Now keep in mind, Lenoch currently sits at rank 40 on the ladder. Sniper currently sits at rank 440. So when it comes to these two players, I would definitely say that Lenoch is probably a little bit ahead of his opponent. But uh, that doesn't necessarily mean he's out of the woodwork. He's got to be careful. His first TC is still going down. No second TC in sight at the moment. No dynasty really yet. He could be working towards that, but he's got a lot of villagers here on, on wood. No archery range drop down for him, though. We hear that call out coming through. Was that from the scout? I think that's making that call. Yeah, the scout is making that call, spotting out the scout of his opponent, but slowly working in with this food. And I got to say, I love professional scouts and I love China uh, doing it. It really works quite well. Double town center. Being pretty efficient here. We'll do a quick stock take and see where players are at. 34 villagers at the moment for Lee Nock. Looks like we're going to get a little, a few picks. He could, he could fight this. I think he wants to fight this. Okay, that, that you don't want to fight, but you should be able to get rid of that. Doing uh, raids from multiple angles here. Just using the double up uh, double up knights. They're going to be able to fall back and manage to stay alive. He could actually uh, get a nice little run in here. But uh, keep in mind, the, the most recent buff to the spears has actually affected the French very, very poorly. Uh, so you might be wondering, what buff are you talking about, Drongo? Uh, it is specifically that spears automatically brace here. Uh, so whenever a charge happens, the spears will automatically brace as long as they're attack moving. Uh, and, you know, attack move is basically one of those things that you do by default. And as a consequence, it means that you're almost always going to be bracing your spears. So, you know, when you think about week one of what we were experiencing in Age of Empires 4, you know, you think back to Genesis, think back to everyone's like playing French. It was French mirrors everywhere. Nobody knew about the brace mechanic. I mean, we knew about it, but we didn't know how to do it. We didn't know how to, you know, use it properly. We knew about spears, but uh, obviously, you know, the brace mechanic is significant because it denies so much of what makes the French royal knight so powerful. And that's number one, it's the damage that comes in from their lance. Number two, it's that little bit of extra damage that they get afterwards. So the royal knight, you can see it gets uh, the bonus damage for three seconds after charging, which works out to be about two hits. So that gets denied as well. 
and that really starts to stack up over the course of a game. You know, if you if you rinse and repeat that four or five times, you're really going to start making a difference when it comes to the amount of spears your enemy is able to actually hold at any given time. Archer's going to be moving down towards this gold mine. Could potentially look to idle it up. We spot out the uh, the knights are continuing to patrol around. We'll switch it over to income per minute so that you guys can see where these two players are at. We've got Sniper at the moment sitting on 34 villagers. He is going to continue moving forward, Lee Knock, with these archers. They're going to take a little bit of damage. Ideally, this uh, this outpost would be up in this position. Would have been perfect for him. But we've got 46 villagers versus 35. So a villager lead beginning to build for Lee Knock at this point. And he's very happy with this because he can just continue applying pressure, continue making double villagers at this point in time. And uh, he's going to continue to pull ahead of his opponent. Uh, so And th then it becomes very difficult for him. Villagers now going to be going down. So those archers or spears inside need to be vacating that position. And they need to be giving it up. It looks like the IO going to be going down, unfortunately. Very expensive loss right there. He's got five spears inside this outpost. They need to be coming out. That needs to be for the villagers. Those damn spears. And now those, uh, those horsemen are going to be looking to try and clean up the archers that are out here. The huge mass of archers beginning to build for his opponent. Uh, no upgrades coming through just yet. Horsemen, no upgrades either. And we've got a pretty nice composition that's coming out for the Sniper at this point in time. So I do like... I'm a big fan of the melee composition. It synergizes very well with upgrades. So one thing to note is obviously you can go for plus one armor. That's going to affect all of your units. Plus one attack or melee attack doesn't affect all your units. It doesn't affect your archers, but it does affect both of these units here. So you can go plus one and it gives you an extra plus one damage for your, ho your horsemen, an extra plus one damage for your spearmen. So a very nice synergy there uh, for the Sniper in this early game. But I would love to see from Sniper... Uh, obviously a second town center. I would also love to see him go into that dynasty and begin to mass up those Chokunu. That would really help him out. But he's going to be on 36 villages. We'll check back in with Lee Nox, see how he's doing. 53 villages, so a 15 villager lead at this point. He's beginning to transition and diversify his food income as well. So we can see that the initial berry patch is gone. He's going to be moving out to the second one. Also moving out to the hunt at this point. My main concern is he doesn't have a lot of line of sight, so there could be raids that do come in here. Now, against the horsemen, you're not, you don't really need to worry that much about being raided. Uh, you just need to be worried about being idle. But now it looks like Lee Nock might be in a bit of a difficult position right here as Sniper actually begins to push up around him. We see that the dance begins to, to happen and uh, Sniper actually making a really good connection here. So many units beginning to come out for him and it looks like he's going to be able to clean up this mass completely as Lee Nock actually falls away with his tail between his legs. He says, hey, I don't want I don't want this fight. I don't want anything to do with this fight. Just let me get back to the base. Let me keep my mass. Those archers are trying their best to defend the knights and the knights are going to be able to hold on for the moment. So even though it looks like the mass is significant for the sniper. It's important to remember those units are a little bit cheaper than the the corresponding knights that are out from the French player, but very nice play there from Lee Nock to manage to hold on and a great little counter attack there from the sniper. But yeah, my main concern at the at the moment is a potential raid coming in over here. It's going to force him to be idled. He's obviously got the farms going down as the French player as well, looking really nice here. You know, it's so close to a perfect ring of farms, you know, at Lee Nock. I, I really got to give you nine out of ten here. But uh, you're just you, you're just missing one. But uh, that's that's all right. We'll forgive you. We'll forgive you. Dynasty now going to be coming in for the sniper as well. So sniper going to be in a pretty decent position. He's got the double stacked up farms. Would love to see a mill down here just to help out with that. And we do have professional scouts that is coming in as well. His village account not looking too bad. 41 villagers. Obviously, he's lost a few villagers throughout the game. He lost that IO as well. Um, I think he lost a villager over here. The first villager went down over on the gold mine. And then I think he lost another three villagers on that gold mine in the attack. But now that the Song Dynasty is hit, his villagers are going to be training faster. So for anybody unfamiliar with the Chinese, the way that they work. Uh, so we'll take a look at their dynasties. So you can see that the first one, it's uh, it's their stock standard one. It's called the Tang Dynasty. It gives you a little bit of a buff to your line of sight for your scouts. 30% might not seem like a lot, but it is an awful lot. Got a little bit of an attack. We'll get back to that later. Do not worry. Uh, but uh, look at all the horsemen now coming out right here for the sniper. He's looking incredible. He's got plus one for both of the attacks, plus one uh, for the defense as well. He's looking incredible as he tries pushing out across the map. But you can see all of the horsemen are just running into each other. The knights are just like, yeah. Oui, oui, bonjour. Wait, wait, what is it? Bonsoir. Uh, what is, what's goodbye in French? I don't even know what goodbye is in French. But uh, he's going to be falling back. Plenty of archers here as well. Lenox got to be careful. This is a significant mass. He could have surrounded that. He probably could have finished that off. Au revoir, au revoir. Thank you. Thank you, chat. Chat helping me out there. Uh, yes, it is au revoir uh, in the French accent. I must let down. Au revoir. 
And uh, that's what French players do best. But it looks like we may have a potential age up coming through here. I like the Dynasty play as well from Sniper. Obviously, he's behind when it comes to his economy. Um, but he's playing pretty decently. Like, with regard to the income per minute, you can see that he's keeping up with his opponent. Lenox slightly ahead on gold, slightly ahead on stone. But realistically, stone's not that many. I mean, Lenox actually quite far ahead in economy if we were just to do a, a quick comparison. 47 villagers. Uh, compare that to 70 uh, we've also got an age up coming through now for Lenox. 17 villagers getting dropped down on that guild hall. Looks like a mill going to be put down out here. I do not, I'm not a fan of this at all. The fact that it's out that far. I would have preferred, you know, just put the mill up here, put the mill here. Just even, even put the, 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 uh, the farms around this town center. Just do anything to keep them away from this potential raid that's coming in. Because if, if, uh, if Sniper actually spots this out, there could be, yeah, he spotted that farm. He should have gone in the whole way. I mean, Sniper's got a significant advantage here at this point in time. A keep going to be going up right now for Lee Nock as well. Uh, so this is pretty decent um, for for Lee Nock. He's looking very good at the moment. Um, my main concern for Lee Nock is if this game does go late game, he's going to be up against Fire Lancers. Uh, Fire Lancers are notoriously difficult to deal with. I should know. Uh, I am a Chinese player after all. But uh, let's talk a little bit more about what that dynasty means for his opponent. So keep in mind, obviously, uh, Lee Nock's on two town centers. Sniper's on one town center. You might be thinking, oh, that's absolutely crazy. There's going to be no way he can keep up. Yes, that is true, but uh, he is able to utilize the Song Dynasty. So because he's made both of these landmarks from the same age, uh, he is technically sitting in it. It says Tang. It's not. It's actually Song. Um, and it's going to be reducing his villager train time by 35%. So it actually takes it from 20 seconds of villager to 13 seconds of villager. So it's not all bad. It's not all bad. Going to be aging up now. Astronomical Clock Tower coming down. No surprises there. Uh, so I wonder what kind of composition we're going to be seeing out of Sniper. Obviously, he's got a big mass here of um, of horsemen. So very easily, he could transition into Fire Lancers. Obviously, it's it's an expensive thing to get into because not only do you have to drop down your first Astronomical Clock Tower, you actually have to drop down the Imperial Palace as well. And then that's going to unlock the Fire Lancer for you. But uh, once you can get that, you're going to be in an absolutely beautiful position. Um, and it's going to mean that you are able to really take control of the game, begin raiding it. Now we've got Lee Nock really looking to take advantage of this uh, this keep, uh, this uh, chi uh, this uh, French keep. So let's talk a little bit about this and about this mechanic because, in my opinion, this is one of the most underrated mechanics in the game. It's not that it's underrated; it's just it's not underutilized. It's it's underappreciated. Let's say that it's kind of like you know your mum. You know, for 18 years she was cooking your dinners and she was you know preparing your lunch for school and she'd do your washing on the weekends and you know you'd never say thank you you'd never do anything like that the castle is kind of the same thing for the french it is essentially the mother of the french and it's because of this bonus that it's got so it reduces the cost of units for the stable and the artil uh, the um, archery range in its vicinity so the immediate vicinity around it and you might be thinking like oh well like maybe it's like what five percent ten percent nope it's a lot. It's like, it's 25%. It is a huge amount of resources. And it really begins to uh, to build up quite significantly. I think the tooltip says 25%. Yeah, the tooltip says 25%, but I think it's only actually 20%. I'm just going to do some quick math here, but this Royal Knight should cost 100 gold, um, but it only costs 80. So I'm just going to carry the one. Yeah, it's 20%. Yeah, I, I can confirm I am a mathematician. I've done the math. Uh, it is It is 20%. Uh, but it, like that's a huge amount when you think about it and it, it's a raw cost reduction so that, that's what makes it so strong so it's not like it's you're getting extra stats or worse stats or anything like that it's it's just a very base thing so you're able to have way more production than your enemy and in addition to that you're able to utilize the other bonus that the french obviously get which is faster villager production so he's sitting at the moment lee knock on 94 villagers he's having a great time he's booming his heart out um compare that over to sniper who's sitting on 63 villagers so a significant difference a 40 villager difference at this point 33 veteran horse going to be running in at this point and looking for villagers they are going to find them as well he needs to be a moving these a little bit better ideally you want to get in them on top but now the archer is going to be picking the wrong fight my friend that is not a fight you want to be taking plus three armor going to be coming in for sniper as well we'll check and see whether reinforcements are in on the way and beautifully eating up these archers the veterans he comes in but it's not going to be nearly enough and now veteran royal knight's going to be coming up as well looking to try and shank out his opponent obviously these guys are, are much stronger than the the horsemen but keep in mind there is not a lot of of Royal Knights coming out at the moment for Lee Nock. He really needs to start building a few more of these before he starts picking fights over with his opponent. So he's got to be careful. He is going to try and chase them out, try and force them back over towards the rest of his base. It doesn't look like there's too much going on. He is going to completely mine out that one. We've got a bit of a long distance mine coming out. I don't, you know, I don't mind a little bit of a long distance chop. I'm always a big fan of that. 
But uh, Lee Nock going to continue chasing down towards that uh, that angle. We've actually got Arbitrier coming out now here as well. He's got to be careful. He's walking right into this. Lee Nock, wake up, my friend. Uh, 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 Lee Nock, hey, man. You could you could lose... Oh, whoa. Sniper should have just come straight in for this. You come in, you kill all these, and then you just run away. Like, that, that is the dream right there, man. That is the dream. We'll take a look at what Sniper's got going on. And now we've got the uh, the uh, response up towards his base. So plenty of units up here. He's got to be careful. That mass is beginning to build. I'd love to see him just cut across. He really just wants to cut across at this point. Oh, Sniper, it's, 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 it's easy pickings right there, my son. But uh, now towards the base of the French player, we've got that raid continuing to come in. Looks like Lancers are going to be coming out as well. Looks like he does have plus two uh, range attack. And now we've got a Ram going to be coming down. And Lee Nock now trying his best to hold on. Those archers are going to continue moving in. He's got to be focusing down these spearmen. It looks like that's what he's going to do. A lot of knights here in the mix, though. So it's not going to be pretty. And now we've got the Ablatria lodging down their, pa their Pavis. Uh, going to be providing plenty of armor for them. It looks like the raid is continuing back towards the base of the French player, but it is going to be shut down. Lenok actually doing very, very well here and managing to hold out. And now we're in a difficult spot for the Chinese player because the battering rams are going to begin coming in and he's lost all of his military. So what, what, what type of response can we have out of here for the Chinese player? I mean, a supervised astronomical clock tower into 17 nester bees. That's a response that would be appropriate here. But even then, like, we're beginning to see the um, numbers building of lances. But realistically, I mean, you can see how many units that are coming out right here. He's down in economy. Not only is he down in economy, but keep in mind, production as well is a big thing. We've got this keep providing 20% reduced cost. Uh, so it's basically plus 20% economy. Like, that, that's the best way to think of it. 20% reduced cost is plus 20% and it's a cap. It's it's like it, it stacks with everything else. You've got like you have those resource upgrades, right? And then you stack this on top because it's a literal reduction in 20 in uh, in unit cost. Nestabees is going to be coming out, so this is the right choice here from Sniper. He's going to be in firing off. Beautiful fire, beautiful volley right there coming out of the Nestabees. Uh, that one only looked like it fired three shots before it uh, it backed out, but now Sniper in a difficult spot. We'll take a look as we move the camera around, try and get a good little angle here. He manages to fire off with, with what appear to be four fireworks into the crowd. It looks like a few people get scared. Now that Nesta Beast is going to get healed up by the villagers. Got to be careful. This wood line is going to potentially going to be going down. Nesta Beast firing off on the the front line. They're holding out pretty well, I will say, at this point in time. Nesta Beast doing a great job, actually, getting back on the back line. As long as he's got units coming in to reinforce, he's going to be in a pretty decent position. Sniper holding on for dear life. Nesta B still managing to have pretty decent health. He's got to heal this one up. I need to see like five villagers out over here tapping away. First, Nesta B is going to be going down. Second one going to be going down very shortly. And it looks like the numbers from the sniper have actually fallen. He's in a difficult spot as the mass has built up really for his opponent. And Lenok is victorious. Fellas, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll leave a link in the description to the EGC TV Discord. I encourage you to go over and join it. If you're into competitive games like this one, then... This, they're going to give you a ping every single time these two players go at it. Before we get out, I will show you guys the village account. You can see there just how far ahead the French player was. The military account. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.